Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. It's my friends at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna do this basket weave Tunisian dishcloth. So the multiple to change this particular uh, pattern that we have is multiples of eight plus six. So you just do eight, eight, eight and then add six more chains and then you'll have the balance so that both edges will be the same. In the sample that you see, you see a total of seven boxes going this way and also seven going high. So therefore it's a square. So this is something that you can decide to do for yourself. We have another tutorial on figuring out multiples if you would like to change the size. But today we're gonna be just focusing on this. So let me show you how this is done. This is using the Tunisian Knit Stitch and the Tunisian Pearl in tandem. Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. So let's begin by starting with a slip knot using a four and a half millimeter afghan hook. This is Tunisian style and we are going to start and remember that the one on the on the afghan hook never counts as one. So whatever that you would like to do for this particular size sample is that it's in multiples of eight plus six. So you just chain in multiples of eight. So we'd say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. If you don't want it this long and you want it wider just do another eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Now if you're saying you're to yourself well I'm satisfied I'm ready to go then you have to add another six. So it's multiples of eight plus six. So let's just add six. So one, two, three, four, five and six. Okay so let's begin and we're going to do the first pass. So I'm going to speak to you as if you're a new crocheter to Tunisian and if that uh, it doesn't suit you there is video chapters so that you can speed ahead. But I will show you in slow mo what we want to do for those that don't know Tunisian. What we have to do is that we have to collect this chain onto this hook. When the hook is moving in this direction it's considered the forward pass and when the hook is going backwards that is the return pass. The way that I describe it is that the cruise ship is going out to ocean. It's going forward out to ocean and when it's returning it's returning back to the dock. Okay so we have the forward pass of going out to sea and then the return pass of coming back to the dock. So let's put this on and what I need you to do is that we're going to do the forward pass and we're going to just turn it over and get the back hump of the chain. It looks so much better and if you ever wanted to build a border onto these things it's the best way to do it. So I know for some of you using the back is not ideal but that's what it is. So you want to slide your hook into the back bar of the second chain from the hook and you wanna yarn over and you wanna pull through and then you wanna slide that loop beyond the throat and move it to the shaft. Then leave it. You're ready to go on. The boat needs to go further out to sea. So you're gonna get the next one. Once you do the first back loop the chain will stay turned upside down and you'll see the next chain here. And what this is if you wanna look at it from a perspective like the Loch Ness Monster look at it as the spines coming out of the water and those spines sticking up is the back loop. So you're just gonna go in yarn over and pull through and push down the shaft. And I need you to do that all the way down your chain. So in, yarn over and push, oh sorry pull through and then push. So in, yarn over and push. I'm gonna stay quiet now as I continue the rest of the chain.
if you're running out of space on your Tunisian hook and you have not lift the, this hand, you can just let the um, yarn work just slide up underneath your hand and just hold closer to the hook if you wish. And you're gonna go all the way to the last one. And then we're gonna talk about returning the cruise ship back to dock, the return paths. And it's so important that you understand what we're about to do. To do the return paths, it's always gonna be the same information. And uh, in Tunisian, we never turn our hook. We just keep it and we're just going back and forth like an old-fashioned typewriter, well, at least in my era. So what we have is that we want to yarn over and we want to chain one. While you're doing that, in crochet, if you're familiar, use the chain one and then you start. In Tunisian, it's the return pass where you do the chain one that builds a row. So it's not on the front side here when you left the, the dock, it's when you're returning back to the dock is when you're going to yarn over and just pull through one loop only. That is considered a chain one which will build up your project. Now, you're going to yarn over and pull through uh, pairs all the way back to the end till you get to the dock. So you're just gonna yarn over and pull through two loops all the way back across. You're gonna do this for every row on the return pass. So you're just yarning over, pulling it through two and I'll stay quiet for the remaining of the row. If it helps you, just continue to use your hand that feeds the yarn to help pull it off of your hook. Simply guide the hook forward, yarn over and pull through. So you don't need to be swinging your hook like a baseball bat. And then you're gonna return to the dock and let your passengers off when there's only one loop left. So that was the forward and the return path for row number one and the basket weave about what, what we're about to do is going to start next. So in Tunisian, this here is the first part of your Tunisian. You do not have to do anything. You do not chain one. You do not uh, pass go and collect $200. You always start with the second one that is from the edge. And what I have to tell you is that the very last one here is going to be handled differently and you need to pay attention to that when we get there. But what we have to do before we do that is that we're gonna start off with Tunisian knit stitch for four stitches. Now in Tunisian there is a common thing called the Tunisian simple stitch. And in the simple stitch what we do which is not in this pattern today is that you're just going to uh, go in to the vertical bar. Do you see the vertical bars? It looks like picket fences. And you're just gonna slide behind the vertical bar and you would just yarn over and pull through the vertical bar and leave it on the hook and push. And that is called the Tunisian simple stitch which is what you're not gonna do today. And the reason why I'm showing you that is that where you're playing to do the Tunisian simple stitch is very similar but the difference is in Tunisian simple stitch you stay in the front of the project but I want you to look at these picket fence like it's um, legs and I need you to stick your hook between the legs of that picket fence of this post right here. So you're just gonna go in and you're just gonna go behind and you're going to go diagonally to the back and you're splitting the legs of that stitch work. Then you're gonna yarn over and pull through. And I'll show it to you a few times. So you're just gonna yarn over, pull through and then push. And so what you've done now is that you have that strand coming out between the legs of that stitch. So that was one of four. So where's the next one? Do you see it? There it comes up and then back down. You're just gonna split the legs and go diagonally to the back all the way and yarning over pulling it through. This balkans up a project. This makes it thicker by doing that. So where's the next one? It's right there. So just going in. So instead of staying on the front you're just going diagonally to the back. So you're going right through the legs. 
and the next one is the last one of the grouping of three or grouping of four. Okay, so ignore the first one and you see that there's four and you say oh, to yourself there's the Tunisian knit stitch for four. The next four are going to be the Tunisian pearl stitch. How you handle this one is a different monster altogether. We have been working with the yarn that is in behind but in the pin, in, um, pearl stitching we have to move this yarn to the front of the work. Now don't use your hands and start to move it forward. See this hooky thingy? I just need you to scoop that yarn forward so it's just in the right position. You're not gonna do anything with it. You're just scooping it so it's forward and instead of going diagonally to the back you are just going like a simple stitch across. Then using your thumb you're going to pinch the yarn that is uh, falling down in front here and you're just gonna yarn over and I'm pinching that to prevent that from coming undone and you're just gonna pull through that. So you've just created the strand to come down through the project, through the front and then back through the, the loop on the wrong, on the opposite direction than what you should be. That's a purl stitch. So to do the next purl stitch, move the hook in front. It gets that yarn to where you need it to be. You're going to slide into the next vertical picket fence. You're going to use your thumb and pinch it down and you're going to yarn over and pull through. This takes getting used to. So if you're struggling and starting to swear at the at the camera, I can't hear you <laughs> or at the <laughs> but um, yeah, so have a good time, right? Grab a drink. So just going in, pinch and pull. So here's my slang for you. You like slang, right? So you're gonna move it forward. You're gonna go in. You're going to pinch this down. You're gonna yarn over and pull. And once you have the next grouping of four done, which I do now have done, so I see this this grouping of four just ignore this, is the Tunisian knit. This grouping of four is Tunisian pearl. So the next four will return back to Tunisian knit. So we want this to yarn to stay in behind again. So we just leave it where it is and just split the legs of the next four verticals. So going right back and you can count those together. So we have one. The Tunisian knit stitch is really quite fast and two and three. It's my favorite stitch of them all to be honest and four. So you see it looks completely different than the other one. That's why it's called basket weave. Okay we're returning back to the Tunisian pearl stitch. So starting in the next one you're just coming in, move that yarn forward, pinch and pull and do the four of those. So we have one, two, three and four. Okay, so you're gonna continue in that manner going all the way down no matter what size you decided to do and eventually you'll end up with five stitches left. So you have the four verticals and then the end. So the last one if you're in the multiples like I suggested, the last or sorry the next four is going to be a Tunisian knit stitch take you to the edge. So whatever the edge was on this side, so the Tunisian knit was on this edge, the Tunisian edge on this side will be Tunisian uh, knit stitch as well. And you'll do four of those. And you're gonna have the final one left. This is so important. So if you're actually listening to me, here's what you need to listen to. This here on the end needs to be treated like it's a top of a regular crochet stitch. If you go into just one loop, you're gonna have a massive hole. And so what you need to do is that when you stick your hook in, remember how we chained one when we started? When we went backwards in the return pass? This is going to be looking like a regular stitch. There needs to be two of the, of the strands on top to be like a regular stitch and then you're gonna yarn over and pull through. And what this is going to do is that any kind of hole that was gonna be open is completely closed. And then your return pass is what you already know it to be. So you're going to just chain up one first. So just pull through one loop only to chain one and then you're gonna yarn over and pull through twos all the way back and return your boat 
to the dock. And it's going to be after just a few more passes of this. So this would be considered pass uh, one now of four that you need to do for the basket weave. So I don't include the foundation row that we started with and the first one as part of the count. So I say that this is technically number one of four. So because there's basket weaves of different sizes. So because I only have each box was worth like four or um, each stitch combo was only four. I only want to do four rows of each of these before switching the direction to change it to the other one. So if you had like five or six or seven as across and then five or six or seven of something else then you would want that same number for the number of rows that you would want before changing the direction. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. So this is what it looks like and we're now going to proceed to the next row. So in the next row we have to match exactly what we see. So we have this so this would be classified as number two and I'm gonna show you how to easily count this when you're ready. So we're going to just going in and we're going to make the first four as a Tunisian knit stitch. You can actually see what the stitch is now. So you don't have to really think about it. You can turn on the television, listen to it. Um, if you're looking for trash on TV sun, uh, selling sunset really <laughs> that's a mine rot. Um, you can leave me a comment on that if you wish. Okay so we got the first four here was the Tunisian. Ignore this first loop. Re remember that. Now you got the next four. Those are pearls. So you're just gonna move the yarn in front and it will get much easier for you to be able to manipulate this. And you'll have to find your tension. If you're new to Tunisian you might be really tense that you're starting to fight with everybody <laughs> including your yarn project and I'm not responsible for that just so you know. <laughs> and leaving a comment on here may not may help it get off your chest but uh, I, I'm not able to reach through and help you. So the next four then are Tunisian knit stitches. Oh it's kind of funny we get comments on uh, YouTube and said I don't know what I'm doing wrong and there's absolutely no description of what they're doing. I'm like well I don't either. And so the next four then after that will be pearls. So you're just matching these stitches with what you see. And the important and the most important thing is the edge of when you're getting all the way before the boat turns around and goes back to dock. So the last four uh, next stitches here are the Tunisian knit stitch. Okay so you got those four and then you got the edge. So make sure that when you do the edge you have it so there's two loops that are on and then yarning over pulling it through and that will keep the edge from opening up and being completely closed. So let's return our boat back to dock. You're gonna yarn over pull through only one loop. That's your chain one builder and then pull through pairs. So twos all the way back to the dock and I'll pick you up at the dock in just a moment. So I wanna show you something fun because if you got your scrap piece of paper out and you're trying to count your rows it's really easy to tell. We've already just completed now two rows of the four for the basket weave in this configuration. How I can tell this, see the purl stitching here? See that right here? This is one and then this is two. So I know that I got two rows completed now of this. So it doesn't matter where you look. One and two. So when you do the next row it's going to have three and then the next row after that you'll see four and that's when we change direction. So the next ones that we start again, this is the third row of doing the basket weave and you're just doing your Tunisian knit stitches. I'm gonna speed up and then your next four are the Tunisian pearls. And I want you to do that all the way across and then I want you to do that special thing on the edge that we talked about and then return your uh, your boat back to dock. Okay so you're going all the way across and back just with what you have already showed you and then I will see you back here in a moment to start you on the next row. Okay we're now calling for the lounge for the people to reload as we go back out to sea. So you, how many rows can you see that are completed? One, two and three. So the fourth pass and back to return your boat will be the final time before we change the direction of the stitch work. So let's go in and do number four again. 
or sorry do number four for the first time and you're just maintaining with what you already see. So you got your knit stitches exactly where they should be and then you got your pearls where they should be and I want you to go all the way across return and dock once more and I'll be right back in a moment and in the next part we're going to show you how to reverse the stitches. So now you're going to notice is that the purl stitch is a lot taller than these knit stitches and that's normal. That's what's given this thing texture. So now after the fourth row has been completed and you can see in the bumps of the purling that there's one, two, three and four has been done. We're now going to reverse the direction of what we've been doing. So when we've been starting we've been starting with the knit stitch. So now we're gonna convert the knit stitches into purls and we're going to convert the purl stitch into knit stitches. So it's starting with the first one. So instead of going all the way through to make it uh, a knit stitch you're just immediately starting with the verticals. So the verticals you can see them. There's four of them. Do you see them? And you're just starting and you'll do the first four as purls. So one and you really honestly do not need to count anything uh, other than when you started because you can see what the stitches are below. So you can see that these are all knit stitches and you knew that there was only four in this case. So those all four went to a purl stitch this time. These guys are the Tunisian purl stitch. So starting in the verticals going all the way back convert those into knit stitches. Okay, and then these are your knit stitches convert those into purls. So you're doing exactly the opposite stitch that is required to give you the basket weave look. So this will be pass number one of four when you get all the way and you'll be able to count these purl stitches that are jumping out to know how many that you've got completed. So go all the way across just doing opposite to what you see so if there's a knit stitch make it a purl and if there's purls make it a knit stitch. And I will see at the end. So when you get to the end do that special thing at the end to make sure that you capture it properly and then chain one and then return your boat to dock going all the way back and I'll pick you up at the beginning at the dock once again. So we're about to go back out to sea again and you're going to do a forward pass. Now the last row that we just did we reversed polarization really. We reversed what the stitches are. So now we're going to maintain what we just converted those to. So you can look below and you can kind of see that this is a purl and you can see the box below it that it was a knit stitch. So you know immediately that you'll have to be doing your purls. Right? Okay, so you got that. These are now the new knit stitches. So like the orange is the new black, this is the new knit stitches. You know when I first started uh, doing this whole thing online um, when I was calling things the pearl stitch I actually had the pearl stitch uh, written in the way that it was like jewelry for pearls and people were like this guy's so stupid. <laughs> and I'm like yeah tell me something I don't already know. So there's all these languages and spellings and stuff and it's just kind of fun. It's all part of the stitching journey though. If you can't laugh or you gotta cry right? So um, you're just converting everything to what you already see it to be. So if you see it's the knit stitch keep it as being the knit stitch and this will be the second. So when you get all the way over uh, turn your boat around and go back to dock and I'll pick you back up in a moment. So I started going out to sea before I made a call in the lounge that I was leaving. <laughs> so uh, you just start again the next row just keep on maintaining. Um, I've been working on Tunisian for uh, about a week or so and I've been doing a lot of basket weaving so I just like turned around and said I'm going out to sea. <laughs> uh, yes. So go all the way back out to sea and back to the dock again and how many rows can you see that we have done at this point? I'm currently on the third row. You can see that I'm making the third set of bumps as I'm doing the purl stitching here. So continue and I'll see you back at the dock in just a moment. Like for real this time. <laughs> so I'm back at the dock as I promised. I can see that there is three done. So one, two, three. So the fourth 
as going back out to C is just gonna maintain with what you see. So when we get back to dock next time we have to change the direction of these stitches again and change them back to what they were. So it was the Tunisian knit stitches beginning and then Tunisian pearl. But for now you're just gonna maintain with what you see and make your fourth and final pass. So I'm back at the dock. You can now see that you have two sets of boxes. So you got one box, two. So if you wanted to make this square then what you'd have to do is that because you have been uh, working and got five boxes across you'd wanna have five boxes in height. So you'd wanna have three more sets of boxes in order to have this as being pretty close to square. So now that I can see that there is four, one, two, three, four passes done then I just have to reverse with what I'm doing and then the next stitches then we'll go back into the net stitch and then you just look below and say well that's the net stitch here let's make those back to purl and etc. And that's all you need to do. Just continue to go back and forth in that configuration. But eventually the party will run out and once you're ready to um, when the party is over and uh, they're playing the last song I want you to uh, stay tuned and I'll show you how to fasten off. So once you're ready to bind off, it's called fasten off, cast off, bind off is technically the accurate word, is that you wanna maintain the stitch work that is already below. So you'll have your four passes done, you'll see that there's four. Now if you look at videos online and say well how do you uh, cast off with or bind off with Tunisian, it's not the same for everything. So you gotta watch this. So the bind off and what you do with the purl stitch is different than the bind off than what you'll do with the knit stitch. In technically when you look up videos and it says bind off it does it like it's Tunisian simple stitch. So you're just going in and you pull through and through. And I'll just demonstrate a few and I'll show you why this is a problem. Because there's a generic videos out for that but then you end up ruining your project right at the end and you're like why did I do that to myself. So that was a Tunisian simple stitch bind off. Do you see the problem? Do you see it? Let me just do a few more because you'll really see it in the Tunisian knit stitch area. This is worth hanging out for. Watch. Look. It's completely different than what you've been doing. And when you look at it you've been doing the right stitching right from the foundation. So you'll end up with a, a row right at the end when you fasten off or, or bind off as being wrong. So to bind off in the configuration we knew, we, we know that this row below though there's four completed we're not gonna reverse the polarization of this of the stitch work. You're gonna maintain with what you see. So this is the purl stitch. So you wanna treat it as a bind off in purl stitching for these four only. So just move the yarn in front like you have been and the only difference is is that when you yarn over you're going to pull through that regular vertical plus the first loop and that will finish it. Do you see that? And so you wanna do the next one the same way. So you're binding off using the stitch work that has been provided below so that the bind off looks like it actually belongs together which it does. So when you get to the knit stitch what do you think you're gonna do? If you said you're gonna go through and yarn over, pull through and through, you're right. And if you didn't then you were wrong. <laughs> but I wouldn't know that right. So you're just gonna go in and pull through. So you're maintaining the stitch work with what you see but you're applying it to being binding off at the time with the right stitch work. So here's purls. So you're back to the purl again. And you're gonna do that all the way to the end. So I will show you just how to uh, weave in your yarns at the end and finish and I'll be right back in a moment. Once you get all the way to the end you still have that special edge that you are working with and so you still wanna handle it in the same way of getting those two loops or the two strands to be on top so that it will close in. And therefore now you can snip your yarn just snip snip. I'm not gonna snip it because I need this sample for something else. But um, you just snip the yarn and then you'll pull a loop through and then you're just gonna grab a tapestry needle and turn it to the back side. The back side looks like traditional uh, uh, knitting just like you see here garter stitch. So that's what the back is going to look like and so you're gonna weave in the yarn back and forth 
a total of three times. We do actually have tutorials on how to bind off and with that particular idea as well. So this is would be how you do the basket weave and you can do it pretty much any size and this is an awesome day right here at the Crochet Crowd.